everyone, I'm Kendria. I need you to go like, follow, and subscribe. Soul Productions. What's up everyone, and this is Next Level Thinking. What's up everyone, it's another episode of Next Level Thinking, where we always bring you inspirational guests. It's your host, Chris Holmes, as always, and today I have a special guest by the name of... Nicole Fleming. Awesome. So let's go ahead to hit the groundworks and tell the audience a little bit about yourself and the amazing things you got going on. Oh, absolutely. So my name is Nicole Clark Fleming. I am an author, a speaker, and a life coach, a certified life coach. <laughs> uh, I work in the industry of trauma recovery for the purpose of assisting people to recreate new roadmaps so they can be the better them after trauma. And that's always a good thing. So like uh, just off of that, um, I'm guessing that you experienced something similar in your own personal life. I did. I uh, went through uh, numerous traumatic circumstances in my youth uh, as a child, uh, spurring out into transgenerational cycles of trauma in my teenage and early adult years, not realizing uh, the stigmas and the strongholds that trauma could have on your life. Um, once, you know, my eyes was open and just, you know, being a uh, you know, devout faith based person, uh, just seeking God's attention and help. Uh, I come to understand my circumstances and then I began to work on them, peeling back the layers and started the healing process. All right. So that's all great, but, um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to this. So what is the common misconceptions when it comes to trauma? Well, my goodness, there's a lot of misconceptions. Um, <laughs> misconceptions could be dealing with a person who is in the midst of the trauma, and misconceptions could be dealing with the individuals that is associated to the person. But one of the most important highlighted misconceptions is we've all been through something. And we all have our own way of dealing with it. And if we do not properly deal with it, it will resurface somewhere in our lives. And I definitely agree with that, uh, most definitely. Um, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like, especially with uh, the way I was raised, I feel like one of the most go-tos when it comes to facing different situations in our life is the church. And I know, like, other people have other, like, out you know, reaches and things like that. But from the where I've been gr uh, growing up, it's been mostly the church. But what happens like with they don't have like a church or, you know, close family ties, things like that. Like what happens then? Well, to be truthful, let's break that down. And I am an ordained evangelist and a licensed minister. So please do not misinterpret what I'm about to say. Um, we're going to separate your question and I'm going to just deal with the church first. So okay. dealing with the church first, <clears throat> you know, um, I'm running across issues and situations where people are sitting in a church and still haunted and tormented by trauma. By not, and, just, by not just speaking up, just like sitting there and not letting people know? Is that well, what you refer? Many things. So first of all, not speaking up. But then who do they speak up to? So one of the things that I do in my, in my job description is I help churches create a trauma ministry because the question is who's equipped in the church to help deal with the trauma. You know, that makes me think, uh, cause I guess like, you know, most people would think it would be the pastor, but with you bringing that, I guess there's times where people don't feel like I bring that to the pastor. Is that correct? Is that where you're coming uh, to? Okay, well, let's talk about that because I have a fantastic pastor, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, my pastor has not endured any of the things that I have suffered. Oh, so, so it's I more like relate, relatability? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So when I take my issues to him, he's going to say, let's pray about it. Mm -hmm. And saints of God, I am here to tell you prayer is in order. Please believe me. But the Bible tells us first natural, then spiritual. So you can't tell me when I'm hungry and I'm telling you I'm starving and I hadn't eaten anything. Let's pray about it. Mm -hmm. 
we have to deal with the issues at hand. Yes, and I definitely agree, and that makes a lot of sense because when you come to a person that has been through your, your current or past situation, you feel like more like, okay, this person has been through it, and if they succeeded through it, I can too, versus someone that's like, like you were saying, oh, let's pray about it, and they have never experienced that at all in their own lifetime. So it can be like a disconnect. Exactly. So that's from one perspective. The second perspective is saints of God, stop the backbiting, the whispering, the gossip. When a person out themselves and finally testify, because the Bible says we overcome by the power of our testimonies. So when we finally talk about the issues that we've endured or testify on how God has delivered us, don't be that one that shuns them or makes them feel like that was a bad mistake. I have uh, uh, people that I've counseled, and I'm not one of those in this category, but I don't look down on them either. Um, I have a young lady who was a prostitute and who was working the streets. And once she got saved and she come into the church trying to work out her salvation and testify on how the Lord had delivered her from prostitution, now the women in the church is afraid of the woman around their husbands. I mean, you know. You know, I, I didn't even say anything, but I, I knew where you uh, where, the, where their fear was going to go with that. And I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like a lot of times when we go to where we feel like to that escape, you know, to get, you know, energized back in spirit and much more, there's so much like behind the back talking to the point where I feel like that also hurts people from even coming back. But it I'll, does. Mm -hmm. It does. And so what I'm teaching is I'm teaching trauma recovery ministry. So I'm helping churches set it up, you know, and, and <clears throat> let me just say this. The Lord has utilized all of my fields and put it into one. I couldn't understand why I got a master, uh, 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 I'm sorry, a bachelor's degree in legal studies and how I ended up getting a master's degree in project management and IT. And when the Lord put those things together and created this business of NC Project Life, now I understand. And so in teaching churches, I'm teaching confidentiality. I'm teaching uh, ethics. I'm teaching all the various steps that it takes to really take someone by the hand and walk them through this traumatic circumstances. But it first starts with the person because they have to be ready. Yeah, and that is the big thing is like being ready to take that action because it's one thing to just talk about it, but they actually take the steps to make that change is a whole nother level. That's true. So we've got a lot of moving parts to this. Whew. <laughs> so we start off pretty heavy, but that is a really big topic, especially when it comes to churches and just being out to reach out and things like that. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit more into this and we're going to go to the next subject. Um, okay. But I'm glad that you did uh, mention it up. And it's funny that you mentioned about the prostitute thing, because that exact, you know, thing that you told us about is actually in the Bible. I mean, yeah. we, if we really think about it, like nobody is completely perfect. We all have flaws. We all have our skeletons and much more. Like we all are pretty much, I guess you can say you have dirty sides or dirty rags and things like that. But at the same time, we're so quick to judge other people's faults without even yeah. looking in the mirror. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. So like I looked up some other things so I could see you also do speaking engagements as well. So like, uh, tell me about that uh, story and journey. I do. I do speak in engagements for various aspects. Um, I am so blessed to be able to speak on multiple topics. So as I stated, I am an ordained evangelist and a licensed minister. So of course, I'm in the pulpit quite a bit. Um, the He's second, in the pulpit, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the second perspective in which I come is, of course, I deal with traumatic circumstances, child abuse, child assault sexual abuse, sexual assault, because people don't realize that there is a difference there, uh, domestic violence, suicide attempt, grief, uh, because I am a certified life coach, I deal with grief, uh, the loss of loved ones, etc. cetera. Um, the Lord has also allowed me to deal with individuals on how to write a book, uh, how to, how to, you know, how to be married and, you know, how to be the virtuous woman, 
Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so many topics. <laughs> And um, as you do all these uh, great speaking uh, engagements and things like that, I'm pretty sure just the feeling of uh, making an impact into others is just makes it that much rewarding for you to continue and go further. So tell the audience about some of the rewarding experience you have had so far of speaking life in certain subjects or just like talking about different things that they were afraid to speak up on. Wow. I mean, this whole walk is rewarding. I am so humbly grateful. I can't even express my gratitude. My gratitude is so large that I'm so content um, in my space now. Um, I actually walked away from a corporate job, uh, making a lot of money <laughs> uh, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to pursue this, <clears throat> this, this field. The Lord kept dealing with me and he kept tugging on me uh, because he has delivered me from so much. Um, and, and I have really been through some things, but nevertheless, it is my, and it's always been my strongest desire to show others how I made it through. And uh, I do that by going to domestic violence shelters. I, I talk to women from all walks of life. And I find myself lately, uh, it's more men that reaches out to me now lately than women. And I, I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm sure God Yeah, because I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually ended up doing a, a radio interview uh, a couple months ago. And I'm on the radio and every caller that called in was a man. Every caller. And, and so I'm just... Okay, so um, let me let me go ahead and drill in on this one real quick. Was it on? Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me try to figure out. So is it more on the subject of domestic violence or like is it another like issue? No, it was just on the subject of trauma. All the trauma altogether. altogether? Okay. Just, yeah, just, you know, you can pull out whatever topic you wanted to touch on. And we were talking about the book, my book, Abused Adolescent. Uh, of course, that could be found on Amazon or my website at knfenterprise.net. And so I was si I was on the radio and I was just talking about the book. And that's what I was promoting, the book and my annual conference. And I so, think I, go yeah, ahead. I didn't, yeah I, when you said that, it made me think again, like, I think I know why that may have happened, like more of guys coming out. Of, well, please like, enlighten me. <laughs> so, I mean, this is, this is my, just my exception. You know, I'm just giving my best educated guess, but... I think naturally we as men are, you know, taught and raised to be like the more of the, huh, you know, strong soul and things like that. And much more where we don't really let out our emotions or how we feel because we don't want to be seen as weak into the world. So I okay. think with things more being more awareness and throwing out, especially with the internet and much more, I think more guys is feeling like, okay, I can express myself just a little bit of how I feel about a different situation instead of holding it all in. Wow. Well, if that's the case, again, that makes me even more humbler uh, because truth be told, men go through trauma, too. And 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 to the men that's listening, um, I encourage you to find a trusting person, uh, whether it's male or female, uh, find a very trusting person who you can start sorting things out with, who can give you godly sound counsel. Um, who can, you know, help you walk out some steps and start putting some things in his rightful order. Um, man, you know, this world is not meant for you guys to carry everything on your shoulders alone. That's why the Bible says he sends you a helpmate, um, a wife, a, a confidant who can help bear some of those circumstances. Well said, well said. And I shouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and plug in your book to tell the audience a little bit more about your book and description, because I'm pretty sure like after getting all these great jewels and information, they're like, hmm, what is this book all about? Yeah, absolutely. So the book is actually about me. It is a biography slash memoir, and it is uh, dealing with the traumas. I had um, written a book years ago that is not up for publication, um, but I've written a book years ago called The Complete Attributes of Healing. And I did couldn't understand why the Lord had me write that book. It was for a conference, but it ended up uh, turning into a book. And um, 
with dealing with the complete attributes of healing, he gives me these five topics uh, to deal with uh, physical, emotional, mental, financial, and spiritual. And so from that component, as the Lord started really healing me from my traumas, he started pulling out my traumas from those topics. And my traumas was child abuse, child uh, neglect, sexual assault, sexual abuse, domestic violence, and suicide um, uh, prevention uh, and attempts. And so I started writing about those topics. It's about a, it's a narrative book. I have a I have a saying, the woman today. And so in the book, the woman today is speaking to that child as the child is telling their story or what they're enduring. The woman today speaks into that child, explaining to that child how to get through it, what biblical aspects is needed to get through it, what resources are available to get through it. And it's a great read uh, for any individual who maybe have endured those things or any child who's going through those things. Awesome, awesome. You know she's going to be on Oprah on New York Top Time, so you better, like, you know, try to get her before <laughs> she goes too big. And like, man, I can't even reach her no more. She was on my podcast. No, I'm messing <laughs> with you. <laughs> so uh, all great statements uh, when it comes down to that. Uh, one quick question, kind of going to pick it back on what you were just saying, is what is what would you recommend to be, like, the first major step for someone who has faced trauma to start moving forward into their back into their normal life? Absolutely. So the first step to facing trauma is acknowledging, acknowledging where you are and then backpedaling to where it began. Do not try to resolve your trauma at, at that stage because it didn't start there. You have to go back to the beginning and be willing to peel the layers. It's a lot of patience. It's a lot of long suffering. Um, it takes time. It is not an overnight process. But if you're willing to put in the work, it can be done. You can heal. And just like that, mic drop. <laughs> but that is very powerful because patience is, I believe, like one of the biggest healers. But a lot of us just want something so instantaneous and right right now. But patience and believing and knowing that everything will be okay is what I strongly believe will be the, the groundbreaking of making sure you get your life back on track. So with all these straight, uh, strong, great words and information, jewels and all that, um, what other future projects or things you have coming up pretty soon so they can be aware of or if they want to participate in? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. So a lot of my events you can find on my website. Uh, and I don't know if, if I, I did say knfenterprise.net. Uh, there's an event page there. So you can always find my events. But the next huge thing is I'm on a five city book tour right now. Uh, I just finished Chicago and Houston. So my next city is um Maryville, Indiana. I will be there December 7th at the uh, Maryville Library. Uh, my next city after that is Portage, Indiana. And then my last city is Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, once I'm done with this five city book tour, then I have a huge annual conference. This conference is called Pulling Down the Strongholds. And so we're going to break some, you know, the Lord is going to show up and break strongholds of trauma. Trauma, it can, 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 um, trauma Lee is a, is a, it is a root or defi a definitive of fear. And so trauma mm. and fear together, after it has brewed and festered, becomes a playground for Satan to begin to torment. And he starts tormenting because you're afraid of what had happened previously. And you start making, I want to say, chess moves to prevent that thing from happening again. And if you are not careful, you'll make the wrong moves and you're just creating more trauma. And Satan is laughing. He's enjoying what's happening. That's why the Lord said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. And he's messing with the mind by creating the fear. 
making you afraid. Uh, if you've been sexually assaulted, you're afraid of men or you're afraid of people being around your children or you have to protect them or, you know, which rightfully so, but your protection is not coming from a healthy place. It's coming from fear. Now you just said a whole mouthful right there. Like I'm getting ready to round it, you know, around all this about you talking about the mindset and the fear. I'm like, wait a minute, we got to address this. We can't just let this slide. So I uh, add and piggybacking off of that. Uh, that is definitely one of the biggest things. Cause I feel like when it comes to just life in general and everything, fear is the main thing that stops you. Like if you think from business, uh, to going out to different things, traveling, getting on a plane or doing a new skill or doing some dancing or anything in life, the main thing that slows us down is the fear or what other people may think of us, or you don't want to go through this past experience again because how it felt, the pain, you're remembering that. And that is like the main thing that prevents you from actually walking towards your destiny and where you need to go to actually uplift or change your life around or to impact others. So I'm mm -hmm. a strong believer into that. But I want to go even further with this um, thing. Uh, do you believe when it comes to achieving not even just Trump, but achieving any kind of success and change in your life, that fear is the, the biggest thing that holds people back and why? It can be if you allow it. And, and yes, that is a very strong component. And that's why we're going to be talking about the strongholds in this conference. Why is it a big thing? Uh, because either one, either you've experienced the failure in that area prior to and did not deal with it in a healthy manner, or two, you preconceive what it's going to look like and you don't trust the process. See, that's why the Bible said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. You cannot perceive an outcome because you don't know how God is going to turn that thing into your, in your favor. Don't so you lean on your own him. understanding. <laughs> trust him more than you're trusting your perceptions. Because see, here's what David said. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, it's a shadow. It's a figment of your imagination. It ain't even real. Wow. But you're perceiving an unrealistic concept when God said it ain't so. So trust in him more than you trust in your perception or your past experiences. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like I just went to church. <laughs> but like, yeah, that is definitely really strong right there, especially when you hit. That was just powerful. It is. It's not real. It's and if not. you really, and if you really think about it, it really is not. It's. It's all in our heads. Like anything that we think is like, we just allow that fear to prevent us. Like we think it's a wall and barrier when it never existed. It's all in our head, and it comes back to perception. Yes, yes, it is. You know, and I and, and that that right there can be attached to so many topics. It can be attached to marriage. Marriage is failing because you fear or you anticipate or you have a perception or you're afraid of a past experience. Yes, fear. And it's the devil's playground for torment. And we can't allow that to happen. We got to go ahead and uplift and overcome. Or in, uh, or in other words, like my brother would like to say, uh, he would say, use that as a stepping stone or your footstool. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I often tell people one of the ways to overcome fear, and the Lord had been dealing with me with formulas. And he said, first, be obedient. Despite what your perceptions are, Obey the word of God and his commandments. You may think an outcome is going to come to pass, but don't allow that to be a sacrifice because obedience is better than sacrifice. So first obey. And then after you obey, he said, then you can have faith because obedience is the door, is the key to the door. Faith is your currency. Faith is what's going to rain down favor and blessings. You put them two together, you can overcome anything. 
powerful indeed. So with all of this, you got to go ahead and let the audience know where can they find this lovely sister so they can keep her overcoming and never allow fear to be the playground, but actually a stepping stool so they can really launch forward in their life. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my, 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 my website, knfenterprise.net. My blog, ncprojectlife.weebly.com. My email is ncprojectlife at gmail.com. I'm available for speaking engagements, one-on-one life coaching. I do virtual coachings uh, and uh, buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> of course, definitely got to support. So with all that and great said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap everything up. As you know, we always help elevate people to the next level and avoiding that playground so you can start living the best version of your life. It's your host, Chris Holmes, as always. Uh, and then I have my special guest by the name of... Nicole Clark Fleming. Awesome. Make sure that you share and subscribe to all the platforms. We're talking about YouTube, Facebook, IGTV, iTunes, and much more. We want to keep that motivation going and help you exceed and reach to the next level. Peace and much love.